Hey guys, today, well, <laughs> over the next couple of days, my time, we're going to paint this Christmas card image for my backers on Patreon. So if you wanna see how it's done, keep watching. Hey guys, so today we are gonna start painting my 2017 Christmas card image. Last year, I took you through all the steps that I go through when painting a watercolor illustration. We're gonna do that again this year, but not quite in such depth. If you're looking for a more step-by-step -step watercolor tutorial, I recommend you check out not only my watercolor basics series over at the blog, but also my watercolor basics tutorials here on my channel. So the first thing I'm going to do now that this piece has been stretched, and this was done on 300 pound Kilimanjaro paper. Usually you wouldn't have to stretch 300 pound paper. I did because I printed these blue lines and I wanted them to fade and they're much less prominent now. Um, so the next thing I want to do is I have a fairly large well here and I'm going to put some water in it using an eyedropper. And then we're going to mix up our wash color and for my Christmas card images I really love warm rich sort of golden background colors so I am going to do a wash of New Gamboge but Indian yellow would also work just anything kind of sunny and bright it kind of gives like this nostalgic sort of Christmassy feeling I think and then I'm going to use a mop. This is a synthetic mop. It's a cotton mop and it's a smaller one. I have three actually. I have two in this size and then one large one. And I am, well, I'm going to use some erasers and prop my gator board up. I'm just going to work my way down. And then I'm gonna pick up this hair, but I'm going to use a paper towel and dab out the excess liquid from my brush. I make a thirsty brush and then I'm gonna soak up the excess liquid on my paper surface. That way we don't get any unusual pooling and I'm going to give that a chance to dry. Now that this has had a little bit of a chance to dry, I want to do another layer and I'm going to grab synthetic which was in my natural brushes and shouldn't have been and add a little more of New Gamboge and I probably should be working with an even larger brush than this and I'm going to add some clean water and I'm going to go in directly with the new gamboge and darken some areas and spread them out. And that way, kind of looks like I have a background or at least something going on in the background when it's really just a lot of yellow. And spread that out somewhat as well. What's nice about this 300 pound cotton rag paper is it can take a lot of water 
Now I'm going to grab some salt. This is kosher salt. You could use table salt, but since kosher salt has larger flakes to it, they're going to have a different pattern. And I'm just carefully sprinkling it in here and there. And that's going to soak up some of that water. Not a lot, but enough to create an interesting, hopefully, modeled pattern. And that would be great also if you wanted to do, say, snowflakes in the background. Okay, now to let that dry, I'll zoom in so you guys can at least see the salt on the paper. I can't afford to zoom in or move around too much this video since so much of my workspace is taken up. I can't afford to move things. All right, now that this has had a chance to dry, I'm gonna take this over to the trash can and brush all of that salt off of my paper. And I'm gonna do that not with my hand, but with a drafting brush. Using a drafting brush, it's gentler, a little softer, and you don't get the oils that would be on your hand onto your paper. So I have brushed off all of the salt, and now I wanna start on the tree. So go ahead and actually what I might do is I might go wash this out and refill it with clean water. So I'll be right back. All right, so refilling my large palette. I cannot get that in shot, so I apologize. And I'm going to work with, hmm, I do want some highlights in the tree. So I'm going to fill one of my small palettes as well. Then I'm going to put a drop of water in olive green gold, hooker's green, and then I've got some blues that work really well for shading those sort of things. Then I'm going to grab some of that olive green gold. That's gonna be my highlight. And I could work directly from the palette, but I'm just going to add some water to it now. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna brush that in around my lights. So hopefully that'll look like my lights are illuminating the needles on the tree. Then I'm going to go in, actually, I'm gonna blend some of that out a little bit. Especially up here where the color is a little harsh. Now, I haven't yet decided if I want to do white, yellow, or multicolor lights on the tree. I kind of want to go with multicolor lights, but there is a high risk of it looking tacky. But that's kind of what I like about multicolor lights. I love how bright and cheerful and somewhat tacky they are. So and then I'm going to paint in some of that green gold. along the tops of the boughs. And I think I'm going to give that a chance to dry. And that is more gold than green at this stage. So we are gonna have to work a little more saturated. We're gonna work a little bit more saturated with that green gold. So we're gonna pick some up directly from the palette this time. and using short feather-like strokes, we're just going to brush that in, leaving some of the highlighted color. Want it to look like light is hitting pine or fir needles. This is probably a fir tree. I'm really painting from memory, not necessarily from reference. My parents I think they always got fir trees. 
um, because they last a little longer, I think. They also just smell so nice. I mean, pine trees smell really nice too, but fir trees are super nice smelling. When I was a girl, we always had real trees. Now my family does fake trees, which is understandable. I mean, there's no small kids. Uh, they have a cat who's indoor outdoor. So, you know, having a real tree, she's never tried to climb the fake tree, but I think maybe if it was a real tree, it'd be a little too tempting for Rem. So going more by, I want to say they always got Douglas firs, which are kind of a blue green, which is probably the direction I'm going to go with this. I know it seems like we're going with yellow green, but that's just because I want to establish some nice lighting. Do a couple more branches. And I find that it helps to go unless you're doing mood lighting or specific cast lighting, helps to just go with yellows to indicate lighting because that pulls it kind of closer to the viewer as well. Okay, oh yeah, I also want to do feather in around the lights on the tree, which I should probably decide how I want to handle those because that's going to affect a lot of how I color things. And if I go ahead and establish that now and save myself some pain and some glazes later. Mm. I would tell you guys to work smart, but I don't always work smart myself. I do encourage you to work smart. How about that? but I would never demand of you what I cannot do for myself. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you guys can kind of see what I did. I'm going to allow that to dry and I'm going to go clean out my cup of water. So we have fresh clean water for when I paint the lights. And I think with the lights, I am gonna do the multicolor because that's what I remember and that's what I love. So I've decided that I wanna do multicolor lights we're going to do yellow so we're grabbing some of that gamboge yellow part of the reason for that is i have cleared out all of my current yellows waiting for some new fresh ones to arrive so i just don't have any other yellows right now and we're going to grab some marine blue from magello and then we're going to grab i think this is transparent red by soho and i'm going to start i think with the reds and I'll try to zoom in so you guys can better see what I'm doing. And we're going to paint around. And then we can take a brush of water and just blend that out. That's what makes these cotton rag papers so nice is that you can do a lot of blending with them. And I want every third color to be red. So this one over here is going to be red. Blend that out. Then we'll go up a row and I'll do this one red. and blend out and I'm also going to hit pancakes paw with red and the bottom of Kara's shoes with red we'll get some influenced color transitions are a little starker than I wanted so I'm gonna keep trying to blend this out next we've got our yellow I'm gonna do the same thing we did with the red 
next up, we probably won't even need to blend this one out because at this point it's so pale. So the color right before the red is going to be yellow. So we're going to hit Pancake's paw and face. We're going to hit Kara's arm. And that just leaves the blue. And blend that out. And then we've got this blue over here. And I want to very gently influence the color on Kara. So I'm going to actually blend that out first. All right, so we've got our almost one more. Missed one. And that would be hitting Pancake's paw. And you see the yellow and the blue are kind of blending on the paper. All right, so I'm going to let those dry. Now that I have them established, we can start on the tree. So I'll move these out of the way. And start, and I'll zoom out so you guys can see what I'm doing. Start by grabbing a bunch of the hooker's green and mixing it in my larger well. I just realized I have some branches I never, never got back to filling in. I'll go ahead and do those first. Get some of the ones also around the lights where the light would be. All right, now you could work a couple different ways. You could go ahead and apply this green while everything's still wet because it'll help blend or you can wait. And I think I'm gonna wait and come back to it in a few minutes. Mix a little darker green in there. So it's time to start filling in the tree. And I'm going to start from the top and work my way down. And keep in mind that this is just the first sort of coat of paint and that I'm going to work hard to blend and work everything together. I'm just not at that stage yet. And I'm mostly using very delicate brush strokes reminiscent of the needles that would be on this tree. So I'm not just doing a fill. And in a moment I will zoom in so you guys can better see what I'm doing here. I'm going to start adding some of the local color to the Christmas tree ornaments. 
and I'm using a mid-size synthetic for this. Perhaps not the best, even good synthetics I find just drip the water onto the paper. But it is an affordable way to get larger brushes. So this is a Mimic, the one that is supposed to look like, yeah, the Mimic Kalinsky, which is does not perform like Kalinsky Sable at all. And I want to blend out some of that local color on the green. It's a little harsher than I really wanted. These transition colors are kind of ugly. Let's see if we can't do something to kind of help with that later on. Most paintings do have an ugly phase. In fact, I've written about that before. And it's all about pushing through, persevering, and getting past that phase. Which can be, it can be hard when you're really discouraged with what you're doing. Not necessarily what's going on here. Um, I've spent enough time painting to kind of know when something is ugly phase or when something is still going to have many 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 layers of work on top of them so i don't let it bother me too much really it depends on how well, I can kind of salvage those light effects. And I'm actually going to add some green to Pancake. Now he's a black kitten, but I think adding in some local color will really pay off, at least I hope so. So trying a little bit of something new. I'm going to add just a little to Kara's legs, which I will probably regret. Blend it out so that's really just a hint of color. And then I see an area I completely neglected. So I'm going to get in there. Right. Now I could work and maybe I ought to work wet into wet for this. It's just kind of a daunting thought. This isn't one of the bigger pieces I've done. I've certainly worked bigger than this, but it takes up plenty enough desk space when that is a sadly limited commodity. So I'm going to start down here work wet into wet. kind of like the blend effect I'm getting by filling in the area and then going back and brushing some away. So I'm kind of working with that in mind. This paper is going to stay wet for a while which is good for doing softer blends. 
which is helpful when you're first blocking in colors and stuff is to get those nice, or I like getting those nice softer blends. Because I find that you can usually pull details later. Now I gotta work over there or try to somehow. I would normally do is I would normally rotate my canvas, which is not going to happen. Maybe I can remove some of these clips. Pick it up a little bit. Normally hold it like a server holds a tray, and I rotate the canvas frequently to get into fine areas like this. I usually work with two brushes holding one in my mouth right now and I'll go back and forth between adding color and adding water or blending out. Is a really decent it's a store brand it's the cheap Joe's store brand and it is cotton rag and it's very heavy even the 400 pound is nice and heavy it just feels like a good quality paper so I really am enjoying at least it I might even I know shock and awe I might even like it a little bit better than arches I know everybody everybody talks about arches like it's oh so amazing but I've I've had some some not great arches. Actually, I want to use natural hair brush. That way, I won't just drop water on the paper. So noticing that my painting itself is getting kind of muddy. So what I might have to do, what I might decide to do is step away and let it fully dry and then come back to it and not worry about good, <coughs> good background blends and just worry about preventing further muddiness. So that area right there, I don't really care for that. Go in with a lighter wash of the same green and kind of blend that. I need to get in at her hair and over here. And I've painted myself into a corner. So I know y'all are seeing a lot of my arm. I'm gonna pick up some marine blue and mix it in with that green. And down here, I'm gonna just start taking advantage of some of the wet into wet areas. I 
And to be honest, it's not good to make too much progress while your paint is wet because you can't always paint dries a little lighter, a little less saturated than it goes down. So you can really misjudge what you've got. So I need to take my own advice. All right, we'll see how that looks after it dries. A little anxious about it, not feeling super great about it, but we'll see. So this isn't fully dry, but while it's not fully dry, I'm actually going to blend in or blend out some of those harsher lighting effects. But otherwise, I think for now, the tree is as done as I want it to be and that way I can progress on to other things and then decide to come back to the tree. I don't want to render, render the tree too much because it is a background element and I don't want it to override Kara or Pancake. I also want to clean up, you guys probably can't see, clean up all these areas where because I just don't have that fine motor control and I'm hovering and I'm straight, I'm like actually physically leaning over the piece. I really don't have as much control as I would if I could rest my arm somewhere. Um, so there's a lot of sloppiness that I'd like to clean up, but I need to do that after this has had a chance to dry. So this has had a chance to dry. I am looking for something with slightly stiffer bristles. This might, that probably won't work. I may have to go grab one. I have a scrubber brush, but it might damage the paper surface and I don't want that. But I want to do a little bit of cleanup around here. It might not even be necessary because if I go with a dark color for her dress, you're not going to be able to tell. So what I might do right now is just go ahead and work on those lights a little bit. And I'm still not super excited about the tree, but like we discussed, I'm actually just going to leave that for a little bit later on. And I know that's not truly how lights work, but it works for our purposes because it looks right and it has so when I do illustration I don't always do what is right I do what feels right and what looks right um, because to me the feeling is more important than the representation so something is technically accurate but it doesn't feel right then I failed and part of that is because I have such a cartoon style that the feeling is really the most important bit anyway. Then we have the yellow and then I want to let those dry and I'll intensify their glow. Also wanted to be evident that we've got colored lights going on. Okay, I want to darken the yellow on her skin. Oh, I have one on the tops of her legs too. Right. Now to let that dry as well. Okay, so I'm gonna grab a larger soft brush. We're gonna do some glazes. Now the glazing is going to disrupt that first layer of color, but that's okay because we're doing glows. So I will zoom in as much as I can. All right, I'm liking that. Not super hot on the tree. But that's okay. I think, I think once it all comes together, I will feel a lot better about that tree. Then we're gonna do blue. And I'm not blending out those glows since the tree itself is already so dark now. There's kind of no point in blending out the glows. 
Oh, I put my hand in the red. Not even thinking. And now for yellow. Might want a little, little more. And the yellow doesn't quite go as dark or it isn't going as dark as I really want it to. So I'm gonna grab a little bit and just sort of place it in the middle. And I have one little paw area that needs a little more glow. Hit that ear as well. All right, I think we're coming along. And then I need to decide what I want to do with the balls. Do I want to, do I want to leave them, uh, or do I want to do them gold, which would, I think I did gold last year on that. No, year before last, sorry. So I don't want to do gold. I don't want to necessarily do multicolor because the lights are multicolor. Mm, I don't even know if I want to do silver because it kind of will clash maybe with the background. Oh, I should have done something cute. Actually, I should do like a red. I'm gonna go ahead and start on pancakes collar, but I should do like a, a red base with like a green plaid would look cute and kind of seasonal. Go ahead and start that. Oh, maybe I should give Kara a matching dress and then she'd really pop with the background. go ahead and start so you guys are in charge of reminding me that we're doing red with a green plaid and I think that'll be really cute reminds me of all those 80s Christmases all four of them I had I was born in 86 so I didn't have too many but they were the best Christmases Christmases that meant Legos and VHS cassettes, Disney movies, and I think that was like, oh, and a bike. Those were the highlights. And you guys can see I removed some of the clips. I did that so that I could rest my hand a little easier. I really need to buy a calligrapher's mall. I checked paper and ink arts and they quit selling them, so I'm gonna have to find one elsewhere. Now, a calligrapher's mall, M A U L, I believe. Um, it's basically, or a calligrapher's bridge, that's the word I'm looking for. Calligrapher's bridge. A mall is similar, similar uh, result, different way of achieving it. It's, it be, it's like a hand rest that goes over your paper. So you can rest your hand and your wrist on that instead of resting it directly on the paper. And it's great if you were doing, say, the tree where you had a large area and you really needed the stability. Yeah, I think that's going to be cute. I still need to decide what color to do the balls on the tree. Maybe blue? You guys think blue? like a bright blue though, right? Let's zoom out a little bit. I'm gonna fill another well with water. We want a bright blue. And that marine blue by Magello is really nice because you get a lot of color variation in it. So I need to let her dress dry and then I can do my first layer of blue. Right, so let's start with the bright blue baubles and I'm gonna probably need to go in and darken that green local color a little bit nice thing about the blue is it looks um, it kind of blends in it doesn't it doesn't mute the color the way it would have if I did a red but it's also not all that visible I think I'm gonna do gold caps on the ornaments Let's see, the blue blends in with the tree, but it's still a nice bright color and it goes with the light and it contrasts with the background, but not in, ob in an obnoxious way. So I think, I think we're on something, guys. And then, because I just can't help myself on these 
cotton rag papers. Get in there with some blender blender. All right. And the thing about the blender blender is we need to let it dry. But we're making really good progress tonight, guys. I am feeling a lot better about this. So let's get started with mixing up some skin tones. And usually for Kara, I use yellow ochre, which I'm gonna add some water to and let it activate. And scarlet, which has already been activated since we started on her dress. And then I have a splotch of water on pancakes. So I'm gonna dab that up and that way it's hopefully not going to affect how I lay down color on him. And then I'm gonna activate Payne's gray and black and give those a moment to settle in. And let's see, we can do another layer of blue on our, oh, on our ornaments. So I'm going to gently And I'm using a natural hairbrush that kind of helps with some of the bend and snap you guys are seeing me take advantage of. Basically, I am doing a circle inside my spherical ornament. And then going back up a little bit. And I think that does a good job of sort of capturing the reflectiveness of glass ornaments. Do this again over here. And then on this one. There we go. And I will let those dry. While that's drying, I'm going to go ahead clean my brush really good. I might want to go rinse my water container out again because it's gotten kind of contaminated with glue. But I'm going to go ahead and mix up Kara's skin tone. And we're using yellow ochre. And a little bit of scarlet. Ooh, that might be a little too red, but considering how much green is all around her, that might not be a problem. Again. And then I'm going to grab Payne's Gray. I want a lot of it. My problem with painting Pancake in watercolor is he's a black kitten and I usually don't go dark enough. And with almost any other color, it's okay if you don't go dark enough um, because it'll still read as that color. But with red and with black, uh, red reads as pink and black reads as gray. is something I need to be careful but I do want to start kind of light for him because we've got all this local color and I do want that to show up on his fur plus with black or even gray kitties um, the local color is really has a really big roll on their fur. They often have very shiny, reflective uh, hair, I guess. So you would be able to see, even though it's a black cat, you would be able to see highlights, you would be able to see um, shadows. It's just that the darks would be get a nice soft diffused shadow we're going to tighten that up of course later but letting the paper do some of my work for me is always helpful and always a good idea got a big old chunk there we go because i'm reaching the end 
of my Linzer Newton lamp black pan. So I got a big old chunk. Good. Or will be when it's a little further along. All right, so I'm gonna let that dry. So next I am going to finally do Kara's skin tone. Hmm, I'm still deciding whether or not I want to do like, oh, that's way too pink. That's not good. Let me clean that up. That's like super pink. Let's see if we can't fix that by mixing in a lot more yellow. Over than I intended. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a paper towel and use it to help me out. Hmm, didn't pick up quite as much as I wanted it to. So like I said, I'm still debating whether or not I want to do stockings because it is obviously winter. Um, And the way you would do that is if you're doing, say, white stockings, you're really just painting the shadow. So you would go with like, you could go with a blue or a purple or even a really light gray. You could even do a modeled collection of colors. I'm gonna go with uh, ultramarine blue and then I'm gonna blend it out just a little bit and grab a little more and I'm gonna go back into her skin and it's probably still wet like I said it's a little darker than I'd really wanted it to be just have to roll with it And basically only paint the shadows and then grab some water and blend out some of that on the face. I went ahead and Rinsed out. Oh, that's going to be too dark. I'm going to try to blend that out, but that's not going to be great. Or maybe it'll work in my favor. <laughs> I like how I'm very Jekyll and Hyde about some of these things. That's so much a watercolor painting for me. And that's something that makes it so much fun is that there's this element of for me at least, even though I've been doing it for a while, there's still a big element of uncertainty, which is really fun. A lot of problem solving for me, which is something I really get a lot of enjoyment out of. And it keeps it fresh. Even when I'm sort of painting similar subject matter. I'm handling it in different ways and that's really a lot of fun and very exciting. Then we're gonna get back to work on old pea cake here. And I want a little more yellow on his paw. And I'm going to go back into that black and gray we mixed for pancake. Now I want to leave this area where the light is hitting the most kind of light. And I'm basically using this as a base for 
bleeds and blending leave that light as well so all the any areas that i apply this paint mix to um there's a high probability that if i put black in there it's going to uh, travel it's going to blend throughout the area and that's good so i can leave any areas i don't want black in I can leave those areas unpainted and either tighten them up later or just leave them as is but since the black dried lighter than I expected it to there we go I do want to I do want to get in there and there we go So I think I want some red blend. All right, there, 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 there. That's working a lot better. So pancake, I'll zoom out a little bit. Pancake is still wet, so I'm gonna have to work really carefully. I want to do another more saturated layer of red on Kara, and I need to do the blush on her cheeks, but I'm going to do her dress first. Oh, So I'm using Scarlet and a Winsor & Newton Series 7 brush, and it, for me, these can be so sharp and springy that I actually have difficulty controlling them sometimes. Oh, nuts. I actually colored in her neckline when that should have been skin. All right, maybe I can fix that. Maybe not. We'll find out. Maybe I'll do like something cute with it. We'll find out. We'll see. So I am leaving... some areas lighter and I am going to go darker let me actually zoom in I am going to go darker with the red I know this is pretty saturated so my next layer is actually going to be with a maroon to help shade this red. I found that using maroons and purples to shade reds in most, oh, I got out of the lines, in most in instances. It does a really nice job without ruining the color. Not as pink as I would have liked. I do like that you can see the yellow on his paw there. Just got to keep on working at it and developing it. Of course, I've been trying to work on not overworking my pieces too much. And that's always a hard, hard area for me. Oh, it's a nice red. Very very festive red without it being the same red that I used on the lights. Okay, and then that's a little bit better. It's more what I, well, hopefully, we'll only know when it dries because that's the true, true test of color. Add some shade since her legs would be obstructing the light a bit. Do I really want to do that with any of the others though? Not necessarily. Let's see if we can't. Actually, I don't even know why. 
I'm going for that. I should just go straight into the yellow ochre and see if we can't make that look a little like skin. I think we can. <laughs> Not perfect, but better than it was. Hmm. Hmm. Pancake is just not getting dark enough. Let's try a direct application of black. All right, that's a much better black, I think. And none, and y'all didn't see all of it. I'm so sorry. Let me see if I can help fix that a little bit. So easy for me to for for me to forget what you guys are able to see and what you can't. All right, so I wanna do the whole, mm, mm -hmm. actually, I think I'm gonna do these. Mine are um, more of a yellow green than the tree is, so I might go in that direction. Oh, I kind of want to avoid <laughs> that. Um, kind of want to avoid the green gold since I've already utilized that. I think we can do her shoes. And I'm doing a light coat of black and then I'm going to go in and darken them. Now, I'm actually going to remove the rest of these clips. I don't think I really need them at this point. If this paper was going to, I was afraid with the 300 pound paper, because paper has a memory. If you don't stretch it properly, it will forever buckle the way it buckled when you first stretch it. Hopefully I can mm, barely on camera. My apologies. Um, anyway, I was afraid because I've been having some trouble stretching my Kara pages since the weather has gotten really cool and dry. I was afraid I wouldn't be able to stretch my 300 pound paper properly. And I thought if that starts to fight me, then we're really going to have some buckling issues and that's really going to kip all over the place. But it actually is performing really nicely. I was talking to Joseph about why oh, I can't seem to stay in the lines, even though I've rotated this thing to be at a convenient angle for me. I was talking to Joseph about why I paint on Canton Montval, and he was saying I might as well just go ahead and switch to a nicer paper. He can't understand why I still use a cheap paper. And part of it is um, I can buy Montval in pretty much exactly the size I need for painting pages. So I don't have to cut my paper. I don't have to uh, format my pages in any special way and if I for a lot of the nicer papers they're like kind of strange European sizes I guess um but I might be able to get Kilimanjaro in the same ratio that Montval comes in because I could definitely there we go see myself painting sorry if you guys miss that. I could see myself doing care pages on Kilimanjaro because it's nice and it's easy to work with. It'd be like if I could get fluid watercolor easy block. No, 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 not the easy block. Um, fluid 100 in this size because that's a really nice cotton paper that's quite affordable um, and it is really easy to work with in my opinion. All right, so we're going to do the first layer on 
these and I kind of want to leave a bit of a edge where the light would be hitting. And maybe a bit of an edge up there. And you guys can see I often utilize my blue tape as a bit of a sub palette. I think I've talked about doing that last year in last year's Christmas card video. All right. Got that. We're really making a lot of progress. I do want to start putting some shade on that dress because it is so red that it's bugging me a little bit. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to test one of the colors I'm going to use as shade, which is, I think it's like urban red on Pancake's collar. Yeah, I think that'll be a good red. And I'm going to give things a chance to dry since Kara's kind of in the middle of everything. And it's, well, we've had problems with me getting to things in the past. So I'm going to give it an opportunity to dry. All right, so let's get going on that red. I kind of want to have something to protect my hand from the page, or rather the page from my hand, not my hand from the page. I'm more concerned about the page than I am my hand. I've been doing dishes and then I ate dinner and even though I've washed my hands, you know, sometimes some of that can be harder to remove. So rather than risk it, I'll just use a folded up paper towel and that'll help protect my illustration from wear and tear of human life. And that deep red is really nice. I'm gonna leave some of that lighter red help. Maybe I even should have left more, but I think as I add more shadow to the dress, it won't be such a problem. All right, so let's carefully there we go. Yeah. Not my best. Well, maybe. Maybe my best Christmas card because I haven't really liked any of my Christmas cards that much. Last year's was really kind of disappointing for me. Didn't turn out as well as I'd wanted it to. What I'd had in my head just didn't, didn't come to life on the paper. And that happens. And I sent them out anyway because, you know, Sometimes art just doesn't go the way you want or need it to, and you got to roll with it. And that was me rolling with it. And for me, for this one, lighting is really important. I really want to capture, you know, a lit Christmas tree. Maybe I should have done the background dark, and then we really would have had some magic. But you know what, last year, I did uh, a dark room in front of a fireplace with the hearth providing the majority of the lighting. And I didn't, that one came out so dark that uh, I'm okay with not doing that this year. Having something a little brighter. And I am off camera. So I think I mentioned watching Man Ben earlier and I really they have like what a four camera setup something like that they have a lot of cameras and I would really love <laughs> to be to have that luxury but that would be such a pain to edit because you're compiling all these different shots together if I ever ever oh, nuts! so I moved my palette and it got caught I don't know if you guys can see that and it went slashing Slashing through the snow, ruined all my black. I guess that's okay. I'm really not gonna use that. 
soak it right on up and toss away sorry <gasps> clean that one out too at least that frees up a couple of pans fortunately i was mostly done with those colors so not a big deal and the colors i need seem to be okay and da -da 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 -da, let that dry and i'm gonna go dump this gross water I'll see you guys in a minute. So now that we have some red down on her dress, let's go ahead and start in on that holly. And I'm gonna use the same, oh no, actually, I want to start with a really light, well, it's not really light, but an underglaze of that marine blue. Hopefully that will help the holly stand out a little bit from the branches of the tree, I hope. I'm basically trying to make sure all my green things are not the same green things. Although the holly looks kind of cool, just as i have to be careful with the holly berries, too. I think I might go really bright red with them. Mm -hmm. And then, where on earth did my thingy thing go? My eyedropper. There it is. I'm going to go ahead and mix up the color I want to use to tone her skin. Don't want to go too dark, so I'm going to grab some, I think this is naphthamide maroon. I always refer to it as naphthal red, but it's not. It's like naphthamide maroon, and it's a Daniel Smith color. And then I'm also grabbing some permanent mauve, and that is a Soho color. We don't actually need a whole lot of shade, just a little bit, and then I'm going to need to do the blush on her as well. Actually, I might want to do a little more shade than this. We'll see. It's a little browner than I wanted, but not necessarily bad. It's different than I expected it to be. I think it's coming along okay. It's not quite what I originally had in mind, but that is just life. Just how things go. I love lighting effects in watercolor and I always try to integrate them and sometimes I am successful and sometimes I am not. Sometimes I feel like I'm not learning <laughs> anything from my mistakes, but I'm sure I am. Sometimes it takes longer for that to show through. I have never been a super quick learner, especially for art things. So it's one of the reasons why I enjoy teaching other people because it has never come easy for me. I like being able to use that experience of struggling to help other people who maybe take a little longer to learn things as well. That said though, we're making 
I think, making good progress. So, a little concerned with all that yellow in the tree. I'm not sure if the solution is going to be to add more green or add more blue or just roll with it. Okay, I'm going to do the undersides of her shoes, dark brown. Then I'm going to use that maroon we just talked about. Mix it with some urban red and start shading. Oh, I might have to go darker. Start shading the dress. And I want to get, I know we talked about doing um, a plaid with green in it. I want to make sure I get the dress as rendered as possible because I don't want to have to glaze on top of the plaid in order to get the shadows I'm going to want because that's liable to get really muddy. So I'd rather just do the work now. Sometimes I'll do a glaze like that, but I've had it just really get out of my control before. So I'd rather get it handled at this stage. Oh, gotta do pancake. Pea cake. There we go. Another thing I need to mention, which I have to remind myself, is that often these things really start to come together when you add in your white gouache highlights. So now I'm kind of concerned because these lights aren't getting dark enough well, since they're kind of warm. I'm gonna grab some of that maroon. I was really hoping that would desaturate, but that's okay. We can always do a layer of green on top of that. my hand in green already. Also, I am going to use indigo to do the darkest layer of shade on those baubles. So I'm going to add some water to that. And I'm going to, I keep using the paper towel I was using as my hand rest. I keep wiping my brush off onto it, which means I can't use it as hand rest anymore. Okay. Oh, come on, I want more green than that. Yeah, I think that's... A good color for Holly. Oh, I think I was grabbing the wrong green. Oh well, I guess I'm okay with that. Nuts. Got some on the dress. And that's the same green I used on So darken that up or do another layer on top of it, basically glaze over it. Then 
grab a little bit of the ultramarine. Oh man. Getting there though. Really made a lot of progress today. And part of me is like, you should let this dry and come back to it tomorrow. I mean, I don't... So I'm going to grab a little of that indigo on this wet leaf. Yeah, I think I'll do that. I think I will step away. Oh no, I wanted to do the blush really quick before I stepped away. So I'm going to grab a little bit. And I don't even know which red this is. It's something a little cooler than Scarlet, but warmer than a lot of the other reds I use. And I'll move it down so you guys can see. Now to step away, I guess, and let this dry. Hopefully I have enough self-restraint to do that. So I was true to my word and I did indeed step away for overnight. I let it dry. I let the colors sort of settle. And sometimes that's really the best thing you can do. Come back with fresh eyes. And I definitely do want to intensify some of the shadow. Oh, that's going to be too intense. Let me see if I can't fix that. Or at least blend it out somewhat. There we go. I do want more intense shadow. But that was <laughs> definitely too intense for what I'm looking for. And I'll zoom in so you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm darkening up some of the shadows on Kara's face and arms using my favorite go-to for skin shadow colors. So that naphthamide maroon. And then I kind of want to darken up her blush as well. just because it seems to have gotten lost a little bit. All right. And of course, I have to let that dry before I can really paint in that area, but I can go in and add some shadows to her skirt, or rather her dress. naphthamide maroon but I'm also going to grab a little bit of purple make sure I get it dark enough and then I'm going to grab a little bit of scarlet and get started on the holly berries. Oh, I was going to leave a little bit of white at the top. Can always do that with this one. Okay, so now it's time to work on Kara's hair. I'm going to grab a sheet of paper to act as, actually I want a smaller brush. And I'll zoom in for you guys. And I'm going to try and reinforce 
the lighting here. This is a good opportunity to do that. And I'm also going to use some naphthamide maroon on the inside of her mouth. I'm going to try and leave some white for her teeth. There we go. Yeah. And then, actually, I should be doing purple. Uh, and I'm going to want to do another layer of green for the holly leaves. So I'm going to go ahead and activate those. And then I, I still need to do her sash. And I was kind of thinking I would do black satin to match her shoes. So I need to activate the black. Since it's satin, I'm gonna try and leave a highlight. Um, and soften that a little bit and give that a chance to dry and then we've got those holly berries so the next thing I'm going to do is I want to start working on the tree again now earlier I added some water to some darker greens that are now off camera and I apologize that they're off camera. Just gonna have to remain that way, double paletting it right now. And using, zoom out, using a very brisk stroke motion. I'm just going to start filling in. And of course, if a transition is too harsh, like right here, can blend it out with a little bit of water. And my goal is to get this card finished today. So let's see if we can make this goal a reality. And once the start green dries, I'm actually going to go in with that hooker's green that I use to lay down the majority of the tree. And I'm gonna darken some areas, or some of these areas up just a little bit, add some more detail to them. If you're wiser than me, you might start instead at the top and that way you have somewhere to rest your hand while you work. Instead I started at the bottom and now I have nowhere to rest my hand. So Wrist strength don't fail me now. What's a bummer is I used to have a a painter's bridge, not the calligrapher's bridge I was telling you about, you guys about earlier, but a painter's bridge, which is very similar, just much bigger. And at the time it was just way too big for the sort of art I was doing. So I think I rehomed it. And now maybe it's in my attic. Maybe I can dig it up. Because now I think if I just had a bigger desk, 
It would really be helpful. I think this darker green though has been a good choice for adding in some contrast, which was apparently needed because that kind of helps push those lighting effects that I was telling you guys I wanted so desperately. And then we'll go in to the hooker's green again. A lot of this is just working it back and forth until we hit the level of finish. Oh, let me zoom out some more for you guys. The level of finish and detail. We have pretty much pushed through the ugly phase. We are still, of course, adding in details. But for the most part, that ugly phase is behind us. So, perseverance is a very useful thing in watercolor painting. Of course, if you're like me, have a tendency to overwork it. Okay. Need to let that dry. Do a layer on the holly. And give that a chance to dry. So the tree is still kind of wet to the touch, so I need to be careful. But I want to start painting her hair. So I'm gonna go ahead and activate sepia and Van Dyke brown, which are the two browns I like to use in Kara's hair. Also going to reactivate that black and and then I'm also going to grab some Payne's gray. and add fine details where I can get to them on the ornaments. All right, glasses have been donned because I need to see what I'm doing and I can't bring the paper really close to my face try I will try not to obscure your view we'll see how well that goes as I get all up in Kara's grill okay let's layer one of Van Dyke Brown Layer two, going to add in some freckles. That might not even show up on the card, unfortunately. Not working super large compared to what the finished card is gonna be. The card is going to be five by seven, and I think I'm working at something by 12. Or it might even be 10, but I don't know. <laughs> but it's not hugely bigger than the card. Like last year, the illustration I painted was so much bigger than the card. And really, I didn't need to do all that. I could have worked almost at size. And it probably would have turned out better. Adding 
another row of freckles because they're just not showing up. shade to her hair just to get those low lights I think I picked up this brush from underground which was is an art store in Toronto is it? No, oh, above ground. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Wrong direction to dig. Above, not below. And I want to go ahead and knock back some of these. to give that a chance to dry. And while that's drying, I'm gonna go in with indigo. And I'm gonna start doing some small wispy strokes here to indicate needles. So, need to let that dry. And then we're just about at the point where we can start adding really delicate details and we can start using color pencil. Now, you really want to allow everything to dry fully before you pull out that color pencil. Because otherwise, there's a good chance it will tear up the paper. I know some people do use color pencil um, over wet paper to, for specific effects, but for what I'm doing, I want my paper to be dry. I want my paint to be dry before I attempt to add that. And I just noticed, there we go. So this has had a little bit of a chance to dry. Um, it's probably not 110% fully dry, but y'all know who, how that goes. I am pulling out my watercolor pencils. Got a fresh cup of water. And I'm just about ready to begin part do electric boogaloo. Or did I make that joke already? I apologize if I made that joke already. And do 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 do. Just kind of looking at everything, giving it the old once over. How about we start with that green plaid? I say as I go instead into the holly and I'm using Derwent Ink Tents. I really love these um, they are sort of like water color pencils they're really ink pencils I used to just refer to them as watercolor pencils, but I've been corrected so many times by intrepid viewers that I try to be specific now, but they, they perform a lot like watercolor pencils. The difference is I guess they um, are India ink because they're indelible once you've applied them and added water to them, I should say. 
You can still kind of move them around while they're dry. But once they're wet, they're not going anywhere. This is gonna be the true challenge. So with plaid patterns, I find it's best to start off simple. So we start with one color and I need to do Pancake's little collar as well. And you can choose to activate it with water. That's useful if you're looking to blend it out a bit. Or if you're trying to kind of tighten up the line. So I'll tighten up the line. And then you can go over it once it's dried with another layer of color. Grab a blue and I'll grab my couple whites actually. I'm sorry that that is off camera not enough room for me to be able to show everything as much as I'd like to. And then I'm going to do that dries. I'll do another layer on top of that build up some color because yeah it goes it looks really really dark and that's not really my full intention i can actually adjust the camera a little bit better hopefully my head won't get in the shot And then for Pancake, I'm going to start doing some white lines on his collar and let Kara's dry. Ooh, that's going to make it a little pinker than I thought it would. Fortunately, I'm going to go over that again. thought that would have a little more coverage. I'm going to go ahead and grab a red, try to find a matching blue. It's not this one. Hmm. Red, a blue, and a yellow to do lighting effects. And then the blue, and that's a little darker than I wanted it to be. So what I'm going to do, I know you guys, unfortunately, can't really see it. I'll go ahead and blend that out with some water and pick a lighter blue. come back in for this one. I don't think I really need to blend the yellow, but the blue seems to be a little bit a little bit hard to match.
some yellow here on her dress. I like that. Get some blue up here in her hair. Blend that out a little bit. That blue is such a, it's a weird one. A challenge, that's what it is. We've got some red. Nice thing about watercolor pencils is they go down a little bit opaque. Unfortunately, you guys can't see that. So let me see if I can. And I want to thank you guys so much for your patience if you've made it this far. You know, this has been a little... Oh, that red's going to be too red. I know this has been a long video. I'm going to dab some of that red up. And a very chatty video. There we go. But I hope you guys have enjoyed it. And another thing about ink tents is that they are intense. Oh, that's not even an ink tent. I'm using a super color. They are fairly intense too. They're not nearly as intense as ink tents. Waiting between those colors and I'm going to need something lighter. Oh, I should go orange. Why go red when you can go orange? To imply the light source in the bulb. And then I need a really light blue. Which I might not have. That's how I figure out what colors I need is... What colors I don't have when I'm trying to do a piece like this. And then I'm going to tighten things up with a little bit of white. Oh, but I want to redo that blue before I get too, too far. And then I want to do white and what's nice about the white details is that in my opinion they really start helping everything kind of come together I'm gonna grab a dark blue oh I have lighter blues over here that you guys cannot see Something really nice about the Kilimanjaro paper is it's got loads of texture to it, so it can really grab my watercolor pencils.
Okay, so the last thing I want to do is add a few details with some white gouache. And I really, really just mean a few. So I was able to pull a lot of detail. with the white color pencil. So I'm not really in need of too much more. All right, so this area here is bugging me. I'm gonna see if I can't fix it, but I, there's a good chance I can't. Actually, why am I bothering with that? I could bother with that instead. Okay, that helps. All right, so I think I am just about done with this, with this year's Christmas card. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. Thank you so much for keeping, keeping me, keeping me company. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, let me know in the comments below. If you did not, and you have a good, like a good reason why I would like to hear from you. And that way I can improve on what I'm doing. I know it was probably too long for many of you. Um, and I do have shorter watercolor tutorials, shorter watercolor videos for those of you who don't really want like the big long tutorials. Some people do, some people don't. Um, and I do have shorter ones for those people. So. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. And I hope you guys have a great day. And I hope to see you again really soon. Bye, guys.